Greetings, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that is in John 8, 12. John chapter 8 is a very interesting chapter. Today is January 6, 2022. And this is going to be not so much a Bible study, but a critique of a writing. We're going to look at the book of Enoch. And you'll hear a whole bunch of different opinions about the book of Enoch. Just so you know, there is more than one, which to me lends credence to it possibly being real. Just like you have all the different Bible versions. You know, if the Bible was totally corrupted, there wouldn't be so many different versions of the Bible. It wouldn't be there. So what the devil can't destroy, he will copy and corrupt. But there's at least two versions of Enoch. And the one that church people, Christians, tend to look at is the one by R.H. Charles. He was a scholar who translated the book of Enoch. So, Now, one of the big reasons people argue against Enoch is because it backs up what happened in Genesis 6. And I do a study on who the sons of God are or were in Genesis 6. Compare that with Jude chapter 38. And they absolutely do not want anyone to know that the fallen angels polluted the bloodline of women in Genesis 6 before the flood. See, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that, the Genesis 6 says. And the giants, after the flood, had six fingers and six toes. But the church world will tell you, oh, well, you know, it's just they were people were really, really short back in those days. And these guys were, you know, a little tall. You know, they were like six foot six and everybody else is five foot. And they will totally deny that the fallen angels could have done this. And they'll say, well, it's just believing men married unbelieving women. So believing men marry unbelieving women and giants with six fingers and six toes? Really? Uh, that's what they want us to believe? And then God says, go into the land and kill them all? Why not say, go into the land and preach them about the love of Jesus? No, he said, kill them all. Kill everything that breathes is what the Lord said. You know, why didn't, why didn't Lord have King David go and tell Goliath how much Jesus loves him? No. And I did a Bible study on enemies of the Lord. It's called love or our or God's enemies. Yes, God has enemies. And so do we. If you're of God's people. Now, when I do the angels that send the sons of God study, not one time do I ever quote the book of Enoch. Never, never, never. But if you look at Job 38, the sons of God shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. Look it up. 
Adam didn't come until six days after the foundation of the earth. Adam didn't exist until six days after the creation of the earth. But the sons of God existed before the earth did. They shouted for joy at the foundation of the earth. They had to have existed prior. Compare that with Joe, uh, Genesis 6. And I'm sorry, I have a hard time believing that all the men were believers and all the women were not. And they got married and had giants for kids with six fingers and six toes. And then God says, I'm going to flood it, the land and kill them all. And, you know, this is the nonsense taught in churches today. But that's the biggest reason why people don't want you to read the book of Enoch. Now, I'm not going to tell you whether I believe it or don't believe it, because it's been well over 25 years since I last read the book of Enoch. And I was on the fence then, and I'm on the fence now. I also consider Book of Jasher and the Book of Jubilees kind of like history. I read them once, that's it. You know, I I don't pull I don't pull doctrine, my beliefs about the Bible from those three books. I don't get my beliefs about the Bible from the book of Enoch. So, but the Bible, the book of Enoch does say it is the book for the end times. Yeah, I know. They've been saying we've been in the end times for last, since the time of Christ. But every year is a year closer, right? So, with that in mind, let's take a look. Now, who was Robert Henry Charles? He was a uh, he was an Englishman, a biblical scholar and theologian, and he's known for his translations of the apocryphal and what they call pseudepigraphal works. Pseudo meaning fake. He was also a professor of Biblical Greek at Trinity College and was an archdeacon at Westminster and serving as that until his death. He lived, he was born in 1855 and died in 18, uh, 1931, 1931. So, right around the time of the Great Depression was when he uh, died. Evidently, he lived through World War I. So, now people will say that Enoch quotes Jude and others will say that Jude quotes Enoch. So, does Jude quote the, this actual book of Enoch? Or did whoever wrote the book of Enoch took the quote from Jude and inserted it into this book? We won't know until the Lord comes, I suppose. But um, it's, a, it's a wild book. So, Keep that in mind. And I'm going to pause. I'm going to read something and then I'm going to pause. And then if I find something that lines up with the Bible, I will bring it to your attention. All right. With that in mind, um, I guess I'm, you know, this is going to be the intro to the book of Enoch and, uh, Let's start, let's start reading. And oh, by the way, um, some people have asked me, you know, oh, Bob, what are your qualifications? Well, just so you know, 
I went to com business and computer science college, uh, uh, classes in college. Uh, I have like 74 credit hours. You only need like 60 to get an associate's degree, a two-year degree. And uh, also, I have a master's from a what was a Bi Baptist Bible college. But I do not believe in dispensations the way that they teach it. I, I do believe in dispensations, the Old and the New. The Old Covenant and the New Covenant. The New, Old Testament and the New Testament. That's the only two dispensations I believe in. Got a dispensation of law and the dispensation of grace. And uh, they also teach the pre-trib rapture and all that other stuff. And they also teach the Antichrist over in the Middle East are God's chosen people. I don't believe that either. I think Christians are God's chosen people, but hey, what can I tell you? But yes, I do have an actual master's degree. And then people will say, well, oh, it's a diploma mill. Well, they're all diploma mills. I mean, let's face it. You go to Bible college, who's going to accredit the Bible college? Who's going to give it accreditation? The U.S. government that uh, loves abortion? Uh, that wants, you know, are you going to have the Catholics give the accreditation? The Pope? Really? How about the Mormons? You know, the Mormons that teach that Jesus is brother of Satan? My Bible teaches that Jesus created the angels, not his brother. But, you know, Mormons don't believe the Bible. They believe the Book of Mormon. And they're prophets and revelators and whatever. Yeah. How about the Jehovah's Witnesses? Should we have the Jehovah's Witnesses accredit Bible colleges? Uh, how about the Universalist Unitarians? Uh, from what I understand, they don't even believe in hell. They don't believe in a Satan either. And everybody's going to be saved. Uh, really? You know? So, who's going to accredit a Bible college? So basically, they're all diploma mills, if you ask me. So, alrighty. Well, this is the end of the introduction. Let's get started reading.